now that we have um, the relativistic Lagrangian um, we already have calculated the relativistic momentum from it and we can now calculate um, the relativistic energy uh, using the definition of the Hamiltonian We just saw that the uh, relativistic Lagrangian is minus mc squared divided by gamma. So this gives a Hamiltonian equal to. To go beyond, we need to use the expression for the Lorentz factor gamma equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared uh, on c squared. And of course, uh, v is just uh, x dot. So when we replace uh, the expression for gamma in um, the term between the brackets here, uh, we can easily get that this term is equal to 1. So the Hamiltonian, or equivalent equivalently the energy, is equal to gamma mc squared for relativistic systems. It is always instructive to take uh, non-relativistic limits. Um, in this case, if we ex give an expression for gamma in the limit of uh, the velocity v much smaller than the speed of light c, uh, using Taylor expansion, we get gamma approximately equal to 1 plus 1 half of v squared on c squared. So if we substitute this expression of gamma uh, for the expression of the relativistic energy, what we find is an energy equal to mc squared plus one half mv squared plus higher orders in v on c. So interestingly, uh, we recover the non-relativistic kinetic energy k uh, equal half mv squared. But in addition to that, we also see that we have a, a mass energy term uh, mc squared. So it looks like it's a constant because the mass of the system um, can be seen as a constant and of course c, the speed of light, is a constant. And as we know, the potential energy of a system is always defined um, with respect to an arbitrary origin. So it doesn't matter if we add a constant to the total energy, it doesn't change the dynamics of the system. In fact, in his uh, very first paper on special relativity in 1905, Einstein didn't even mention the fact that when you take the velocity uh, equal to zero, so the limit where you have an absolutely non-relativistic system, uh, you still have a mass energy mc squared. Um, it, because it's just a constant and it, so it's, it appears to be irrelevant. Nevertheless, in the same year, in 1905, Einstein published published a paper in um, which was only one page where um, he mentioned that okay if you take the velocity v equal zero you still have a, an energy mc squared and uh, maybe there is some physics associated to that um, so that was in in uh, the german edition of the papers in zeitschrift für physik uh, however in the english version of the paper um, both papers were published in in the same uh, a manuscript in the same paper uh, and um, the mention of e equal mc squared for v equal zero uh, was only put as a footnote so clearly there was um, uh, not a big uh, impact uh, of uh, e equal mc squared initially um, however we now know that this is a very important relationship uh, which relates an equivalence between energy and mass and in cases where the mass is not necessarily conserved and we will see some examples later on uh, we will see that this can be a very useful way of producing energy uh, for instance using nuclear fission